Uh, you're not going to see a whole guitar made in one day. You're just going to see kind of how it's done or how violins are made and uh, the tools and the, the bit of the process. So uh, who plays stringed instruments here? Everybody. Oh, they're all concentrated in one room. Okay, great. This is a guitar class plus an AP music theory class. Okay, so guitar. Random people. So guitar falls under the stringed instrument, uh, you know, banner. Not so I don't I don't work with trumpets or horn instruments. I work with violins, guitars. I make other instruments like Puerto Rican cuatros, lutes, ukuleles, stuff like that. And I repair every every stringed instrument there is. So what what's my job title? What do they call me? What is someone? A luthier. He knows. Can I write this on the board yeah, here? You can write it over there. It's an actual job. Where? I can use this one? Yeah, anyone you want to. You can even erase my uh, chord progression if you want to. Luthier. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's, so you're, if your guitar is broken, you can go to a commercial shop or you can go to a luthier like me. You know, I'm kind of like a doctor of stringed instruments. So I've literally had violin that come to me in pieces. I have one in my shop, by the way. It's 250 years old. Chris. And I put it back together, and it sounds amazing. It's 250 years old. It was going to go to the fire. But I said, oh, stubborn. I said, well, it's in bad shape, but I'm going to fix it anyway. So I do things like that. That's a restoration. I repair, and I make. So here I have a few things I want to show you. These are molds that violins are made over. So before you even make an instrument, you need to make a mold. Now, I did apprentice as a violin maker. When I graduated high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I knew I loved music, and I loved woodworking. So for me, if I combine those two, I'd be happy. I've had the shop over there 10 years. It felt like one year. You know when you're sitting in class and you're looking at the time, you're like, oh my god, it's not 3 o'clock yet? I don't know when guys get out anymore. 2.10. 2 2.10, OK. It was, for me, it was 3 o'clock. Uh, I don't have that problem. I had the opposite problem. There's not enough time. I look, oh my god, it's 7 o'clock. I forgot to, I have to make dinner, and I have to get back home. So this, that's the difference if you do something you love. And for me, I do what I love. So I, after high school, I said, what am I going to do? You know, I tried to find a, a guitar maker, teach me. There was nobody. I bought books, but you really need to be in a shop with somebody. And I found a violin maker, an older German man, and he said he'll teach me. I said, really? OK. So in the old days, uh, the way the apprentice system worked, you spent three years or five years of your time with the master. And you just did everything he told you to do. Uh, and you, you were probably 14 or 15 years old. This is in Europe, Germany, France, Spain, uh, where guitars were made, violins. And you slept on the floor of the shop, most likely, with the rodents and stuff. And uh, you spent those years developing your basic skills to be, from starting from zero to be, like, being able to do something on your own. Your first three instruments go to the master as tuition. You don't get paid to work in those years. And then if, you, if he likes you and he says you're good and all that, you become a journeyman. You can either work for yourself or you can work for someone else. And you can actually start making money. And you were probably about 17 years old, 18 years old at that time. So I did that kind of a path. So I've been doing this for many years. So the first thing I had to do was make a mold that the violin is made over. And this is a very basic mold. You're like, how is that a violin? This is not a violin. This is the mold that the violin is made over. And here's another mold showing now it's a little more developed. So as you can see, I have added these blocks. You don't see them. They're on the inside. And they hold the seams together. And it's made up from these thin strips of wood from maple, which get bent on this iron that is very hot, by the way. And um, they get glued. And later on, this will get popped out like that. This won't be a part of the violin. It would sound so bad if this stayed in there. You have no idea. There'd be no sound. So this has to be removed. And later on, you know, the parts of the violin get carved. So this comes from a big, solid piece of wood. And you carve this scroll with a tool like this. This is called a gouge. It kind of has a, like a spoon shape with a very, very sharp blade. I mean, it's razor sharp, and you have to keep it sharp. So when I was an apprentice, I had to sharpen all the tools. You know, that was one thing you have to learn how to do. And the first one I tried to sharpen, I ruined. And this is like a $100 tool. This is Swiss made. It's fancy. This is a really good hard steel meant to hold an edge and cut. So I'll just show you really quick this piece of scrap wood, OK? So that's what it does. And imagine what it can do to your skin if you got your hand in the way, right? 
Now, people ask me, do you hurt yourself? I say, actually, I don't. I rare. Rarely do I hurt myself. Um, the old German guy used to yell at me if I was working wrong. So your elbows should be at your side. Your hand should never be in the path of the blade. You know. So those things you learn over time. And you get really good with this. It's kind of like uh, this, this becomes your samurai sword in a way. And you master this. And there's a lot of other tools that are very special to this work. Wait, this what is, was that one called again? This is called a gouge. Swiss made gouge. This is a standard violin making tool. This is not really used on guitars at all. Um, the violin has a lot of different shapes. So this you would use to cut, to see the scroll. You would, you would carve this out like this, you know. So that's how this was made with this tool here. Now we have chisels, which is like a flat version of that. You see, this has a scoop, this does not. This tool I use every single day. I've had this for me, I've had this 20 years, this tool. And it's, I keep it sharp. I have to sharpen it like every few weeks. So this one does similar type of cut, but, but flat, see? So that's what this does. This is a chisel. This is a basic chisel. Now, a little older than you guys, I had to go to the old Beacon High School. We did have a shop class. So there was like woodworking machines and stuff, and things change over time. Uh, I didn't have a guitar class, though. That would have been cool. But I did have shop class, so that's why I learned some of the very basic of, of this woodworking stuff. They have drill press, bandsaw. I don't know if you guys ever used stuff like that before. Have any of you used like a bandsaw or drill press? Anybody? Yeah. Okay. What did you make? What were you making uh, with the drill press? Uh, furniture. Like furniture. Okay. So yeah, like a, a woodworking shop. Yeah. Okay. That's good. No one else? Any woodworking? Anything? You could say technically, but I had tech in while I was junior high school. Okay. But I had to move, and I like tech. Tech is kind of has to do with the wood type of stuff. We never yep. got to that. I was still we were stuck doing this drawing technically, not drawing, but these little um, planning things. I don't know. So you had some experience with some woodworking. Not exactly much though. Okay, right, but you saw some of the equipment and stuff like that. I saw the equipment, never got to use it. You know what's funny? I graduated 2000, and that's. That's when I learned how to use a computer. So I was 18 years old, I was like 17, 18 years old. So it was just a different world, like you know. Middle school too. I think my generation was the end of the old world, you know, and then um, I think that the jobs started to be different. They want people are going to be working on computers, so there was no need for tech classes anymore. No, but that's I, not what happened. Is, there that's still is. I know there's BOCES. When I went to the old high school, there was BOCES program, but we had like shop class in the school. Yeah, I did too. You did, I yeah, of course. I graduated in 81. I was so born in 81. I made a little <laughs> Bird feeder. Right. Yeah, you made stuff, yeah. It was fun. Yeah. Well, I knew, they didn't have, like, you know, you didn't make instruments, but they just showed you how to use the equipment and stuff like that, you know? So this tool here, this is called a spoke shave. Okay, this tool has one job. It shapes the neck of a guitar. So this is a neck a little bit in the rough that I started. I started many years ago. It's been sitting. Uh, this is with one big piece of mahogany at first, and I cut this shape out on the bandsaw. And you see it's ready to be, you know, to the, go to the next stage, which is this. So then later I'll cut this. It'll be a little more shaped like a guitar neck. And then, but I have these boxy corners. So this tool comes in and starts to make these, I don't want to make a mess here, starts to round that off. And you keep doing that for a long time until it looks like a guitar neck. Now I do have templates you use to check and make sure it has the right shape and stuff. But uh, the idea is that you start with all the material, you start from big blocks of wood, and you have to remove, keep removing material until it starts to look like a guitar. Remove what's not a guitar. So this is not a guitar. Okay, that little piece of wood is not a guitar that I shaved from that, right? Okay, so this, um, so we, we have a couple different guitar necks here, right? So this is, I didn't bring any guitar tops, I should have, but anyway, there's other stuff we need to use to make a guitar or a violin. These are some clamps. Now these come in handy like, like if I want to, let's say, hold down a piece of wood and shave it. Okay, so now it's fixed to the table. I'm going to use the tool called a scraper. And this is how I'll thickness this. This is a side for a violin, actually. So this belongs here. So if you see, see I'm making a dust. It's like 
This tool was around before sandpaper. There was no sandpaper until like 100 years ago. So they used these tools with even different shapes to carve out all the different shapes for the violin. So this is called a cabinet scraper. I also use this tool a lot. And you can also sharpen it that has a little hook on the edge that does the cutting. Now if you can see that, but I did just remove some material. Probably from there you can't see. Uh, this will do the same thing. I can clamp this to the table with this. I can also, uh, I can glue two pieces of wood together. If I put glue here between these two pieces of wood and then use this and squeeze it, I don't have any glue today, but these two pieces would be, be glued and stuck together just like that. Okay? And of course, that's what's holding this all together. All these parts that you see, these little parts are being held together with glue. And actually, glue is very strong. If I glued those two pieces of wood together, you couldn't pull them apart. You would need heat or something sharp to go in between to pry them apart again. It would be tough. So it's, it's amazing how strong glue actually is. The guitar is held together all with glue. All parts of these little parts are glued together. And they're all made, well, that's probably a factory guitar in that case. But I do make the guitar from scratch. And glue holds my whole world together. You know, I need it to work. If it fails on me, I'm in trouble. Now, I have here another, this is not a tool, but this is called a fixture. It's called a bench hook. And what it's meant to do is get pushed up against the workbench, and I can put a piece of wood here, and I can use my saw. This is a, a Japanese saw. It's uh, razor thin, and it's razor sharp. So this is a daily, another daily tool in my shop. So I can push this way, push the wood here, just like that. You know, that's how sharp that is. It took me how long to cut that? Not even a second. That was like two seconds, right? Imagine what you could do with your finger. That's a hard piece of wood. Look. So you have to be careful, you know. I want to, I want to stay a member of the 10-digit club. So far, I've done it. Okay? Now, I have seen some... <laughs> I was in Spain, and uh, they have a, a strong guitar making culture in Spain. And I went into this guy's shop, and um, he was a flamenco guitar maker. I also make flamenco guitars now. Back then, I didn't. And I said to him, you have any flamenco guitars? He looked at me, he said, you don't play flamenco. I said, well, I do. And then he goes, OK. And he went to grab a guitar and noticed he was missing a finger. I said, oh, he cut his finger off making a guitar at some point. <laughs> so it can easily happen, actually. But he probably did it with a machine. He probably didn't do it with that. OK. And then lastly, we have a bending iron. Now, this wood, as you can see, is not, it's flat. It's, it's straight, right? But I can bend it. It's not going to stay. It just wants to bend back. OK. So how do you get it to have these curves here? Well, you have to bend it on this. OK, and I plugged this in before we started the class. So let's see if it's hot enough. It has to get to a certain temperature. Yeah, that's hot enough. If you see that, then it'll bend. So the way wood is bent is you have to wet it first. OK. Some people like to soak the wood overnight. Believe it or not, I don't. So I just wet it like that, right? Now I want, I want to more or less get it to wrap around this curve here, OK? So let's try. Let me give it a little more water. It smells good, too, by the way. Maple. I'll show from your side, actually. You have to be patient, because by the way, you can break this very easily. If this is not hot enough, or if this is too thick, or if you, if you rush it, it will snap. You know, and then you'll have to cut more wood. So now, it burnt off the water. So I'm going to add more. I remember in the beginning, 
first time my master said to me, okay, you gotta bend the wood. I was so scared I would break it, you know? And I would look stupid or something. But he knew it takes time, you know? And already we have this shape, okay? Do a little more. Now be careful now, I don't want to touch this iron because it is really hot. All right, let's see how we did. We're not there yet. But as you can see, it's a bit of a process. And this is thin enough, I could bend it this way. I don't have any blocks I'm gonna glue it to. This is just a demonstration. But uh, I wanted to know if anyone here wanted to try bending a piece of wood. Anyone daring enough to even try? Surely there's someone who wants to try. Somebody who maybe wants to go into instrument repair? Yeah, instrument repair, instrument okay. making. Graduate this year? Or just someone curious to see if they can do it. I'll try. All right, what's your name? Try Dev. I'm sorry? Try Dev. Try Dev, come on up. The next apprentice. <sighs> All right. So what's the first thing we have to do to this piece of wood before we try to bend it? Yeah, so I'll let you, let you do it. Like how much? Um, yeah, what you saw me do. Go ahead. More. More, yes, both sides, yeah. Even a little bit more. And the other side a little bit more. Perfect. I think it's ready now. I think so. So you don't want to get your hands on this at all, you know. Um, you want to be patient with it and finesse it a little bit. And then you'll see your feel start to relax. And that's when you can push it a little bit. And then you move over and you just, you know, just try to bend it. See what happens. Is he going to break it or not? We'll see. Not try that. Watch your hands. He's getting close. <laughs> Watch your, kind of, but you don't have to get too close. Yeah, not bad. Now the middle part, you want to do more. So, yeah. Do you like ever re-wet it? Yeah, actually, you should actually now. Yeah, because it, it, it needs it. Not bad. And we'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait till he's finished. We're almost there. I think he's gonna do good. He has very, his hands are very skilled. I can see they're very steady. That's important. It does, right? It has like a sweet smell to it. But not all woods smell good. Some smell kind of bad, to be honest. Do you have like a favorite type of wood? This wood is good. This is maple. Maple smells good. There was a guy in Wappingers, he doesn't teach anymore, but um, he was an old German master, and I learned in the old European style. All right, let's, let's, all right, listen to everything. Let's see where you're at now. So he has this, okay, which is close to what I had. Mine is a little bit more. Now you see here, you're not gonna, the camera's not gonna be able to see here, this kind of came off a little bit. Now it could crack there. So maple has these, you see these stripes in the wood that go across this way? Violins have that, that's called flames, flamed maple, or curly maple, or figured maple. There are three different, there's so many different names. But basically what's happening in the wood, the grain is doing this. So when you're bending it, if it's gonna break anywhere, it's gonna break on one of those lines, which you can see, this could happen here. It's already kind of started. There's a way to recover from this, but that's one thing you learn as you're learning how to bend. Good job. Anyone else want to try bending a piece of wood? I just have a question. Go ahead. Is the uh, masculine one Joe Reg? Joe Reg, yeah. That was my I teacher. Have my oh, you do? Okay. And he knows my teacher. Next time you stop by, tell him I say hello. Very protective gloves. Very, very protective gloves. You could gloves. wear gloves. Uh, I've gotten used to doing this without them. You know, you could wear leather gloves. That would that'll ensure that you're going to be good. I don't have gloves. Anyone else want to try? Go ahead, Sean. 
Sean, okay. I have not trust him. I think he's gonna do fine. Let's no, see. I said I don't trust myself. Don't oh, you don't I trust know. yourself? Well. Yeah. <laughs> well. It, it's just, I'm patient building Lego sets and all, but I mean. Let's give Sean a good piece here. Let's see. All right, that's a good piece. So you know that you gotta wet it first. You could do it this way if you feel comfortable. You know, it's probably easier to do it that way, actually. You know, that was so long ago. That was probably 20 years ago. I don't know why I put a check and an a X. <laughs> this is scrap wood for me, by the way. You have a boo-boo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's getting there. He's got a nice, he's got a nice bend in there. And he used the side of the iron that makes a, a tighter curve. And, he, you know, you see, he's learning. I want to get a shot of him. He's putting a very tight curve in there. It's actually, though, too tight for the violin. Because the curves are not that big. But, yeah, but, but wood tends to spring back a little bit after you bend it. So. How do you think he's doing so far? Yeah. He hasn't burnt himself. Yeah. And. Uh, he's like, his fingers are. Way too close to comfort. His hand. <laughs> Ugh, that, that thumb almost hit. That thumb almost hit. He's okay so far. And if you burn your hand, we have to cut it off. <laughs> well, you can't be in guitar class anymore. Yeah, there's no more guitar when you're missing a finger or a hand. Okay, let's see what you have now. Okay, this is, this is what he did. Okay, so. <laughs> He has a few different, there's a few different bends here. So there is a kink here, which you can easily flatten out. The iron is actually happy if you go this way against it, you can easily put it back. The wood wants to go back where, where it was. So I got rid of that. And uh, he has a tight kink here. Let's see if that matches this part of the violin, almost. So to bend this, to bend this successfully, you need to bend over here a little bit more. Hang on, sorry. A little bit here and a little bit here. And of course this is too long and I have to be cut later. Well, good job, Sean. Congratulations. Anyone else? One, one more for bending. We have one more. You want to try? Okay. What's your name? Okay, come on up. Now, should I do this to him? I have another piece of wood that might be tougher to bend. Yeah, do it to me. Yeah, you want to do it? All right, let's try this. Now, this is mahogany. Okay, okay. This is mahogany and this is bacote. Trying to bend bacote is like bending glass. I'm not going to do that to you. Oh, come on. No, no, no. <laughs> but I'm going to get, we'll do, the, we'll do this one. Um, we have to cut it. You want to try cutting this? Sure. Okay, look, so this is what you would do. Don't get any of the arm when you're doing this. You're going to put this here, you're going to hold it with your left hand, and you're going to literally just put it in this slot and pull it. This cuts on the pole until it falls off. So you're going to cut it about there. And just move this out of the way. And I'll turn over the table to you. So you're going to put your left hand over here, like that. And go ahead. So you're going to have to use your thumb and pinch it here. Yeah. So you pull it lightly. Yeah, keep going. Almost. Oh, 
Well, okay, he got it. We could have smoother, but I should have showed him better. But anyway, he got it. We're going to bend this one. It's about the same length as the, the other maple. And here's your water. This one out of the way. Is this going to smell good? That one is not bad. That's mahogany. Um, kind of smells like an old closet, if that's your thing. <laughs> you get used to it. Now watch your hands. And go ahead. You can use this part if it makes it more comfortable. I think it's easier for you. I'm not going to lie, this is going to be tough for him to bend because it's thick and it's a different type of wood than maple. Well, let's see what happens. So I would use now the flatter part of the iron, which is here, right? And then what you want to do is warm up the area you want to bend, like what you're doing, actually. And then slightly put a little pressure on it and it's going to start giving and it's going to start to bend. This takes patience. Well, I'll show you what to do. Watch this. So all you have to do now, now that this is kind of hot, all right, so what you're going to do is start to do this and put a little bit of pressure on it and it'll start to bend. You got it warmed up, which is good actually, that's the beginning. Yep, you just kind of wiggle it back and forth and you feel it starting to give a little bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's starting to say, ah. Oh. But if it wasn't hot, it would crack already. Should I put more water on it? You could put a little water on it, yeah. It's time to bend. And put it on both sides, actually. Right. And by the way, bending guitar sides is way more difficult than bending a violin side. Anyone know why? They're bigger. It's much bigger. It's, yeah. it's this wide. Yeah. And it's even much longer. No doubt. No doubt. I have, I have it. So yeah, you see, I, now you're getting a, a, a bend on it, but this is a much more difficult piece to bend. Let's see where he's at so far. So look, he has bent the mahogany. Congratulations. <laughs> yes, give him round applause, yes. Let's see, let's see if I can push this one. Is it going to break if I push it too much? Let's see. Let's try to push it. No, you know why it's not breaking? Because he had it heated up sufficiently. But I'm going to make it break on purpose. There we go. That's a break, and I can't use that for any instrument anymore. That would be a fail. But he did not fail. He did good. I didn't succeed. Yeah. No, you did, actually. You bent it. Bent it. Right. And then it was also pretty thick, by the way. You never see Look. Look at the difference in the thickness. See? That's quite so the difference. Yeah, that's quite the difference. Yeah. It's like a tenth of it. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? We have about seven minutes. Seven minutes, okay. The bell rings. The bell, okay. Yeah. Any questions, guys? Questions. Questions for a guitar maker, violin maker? Um, Am I curious? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, what was your yeah. most expensive sale for violin? Oh, for violin, most expensive sale? 5000 which is not that much, actually, for violin. Yeah. yeah. I do make violins, but it's not my main thing. People know me more for guitars and lutes. Yeah. Would there be a functioning violin for like $100? Yeah, actually. Uh, they make it now not bad violins in China factories, um, which with a little TLC for me, I can get it to play OK, and it will sound OK. It'll work. So yeah, they do have them, yeah. Any other questions? Do you make electric and electric Yeah. Yeah, I make mainly classical guitars, but I've made electric guitars as well. And I started when I was 13 years old, fixing electric guitars, you know, changing pickups out. That's how I started. So back then, I didn't really have money to hire someone to work on my guitar, so I started learning on my own. I worked in all the music stores, and then I became an apprentice. You said you play guitar as well? 
Oh, yeah. So do you mean, have you made a guitar for yourself? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, every guitar I make is mostly for myself, and then I end up selling them, which is ter it's terrible because you, you made this thing, you imagine how you're going to make it, you know, and then you have to sell it to somebody. And I should feel good because I just made a bunch of money. But it's something that I took three months to make. Now someone else has, my baby, and I hope they treat it right because you know how delicate guitars are, right? I mean, if you drop it, yes, it'll crack. Yes, you know that, right? Um, if, you yes. keep it, if you keep it... Thank you. Yeah. Be careful with that. Yeah, if you leave it near the heater, it'll crackle up here, you know. The neck can bend, so they're very delicate. Yeah. Uh, where is it your main with your, like, inspirations? I'm sorry? Like, your inspirations uh, for, like, luthiers. Which luthiers? Yeah. Like, I oh, there's so many, mostly from Spain and stuff. Uh, Jose Romani is one of the great uh, classical guitar makers. His guitars, if you want one of the guitars, $60,000. Mine are five to 10000 but you, he's he's dead now. <laughs> but he had a he had a waiting list. He he had a waiting list. You had to give half down and wait 15 years to get your guitar. Wow. Okay. And at the time, I think it was something for thirty thousand. So. Any other questions? Um, have you ever made like a Stratocaster before? I've made something close to it, very close to it. I'm guessing Telly then, because they're pretty close. I'm sorry. I'm guessing Telly then, because they're pretty close. Telly, yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Have you made other string instruments like, have, or did you make the oud? Yeah, I make ouds, lutes. Do you play the oud? I do. I play like seven different stringed instruments, by the way. Yeah, I think I saw you play the oud one time. Yeah, right? oud is a Middle Eastern instrument. It's, it, the guitar comes from it. I don't have any here. Uh, if you ever stop by the shop, you'll see ouds. Can yeah. these kids come by and yeah. ring your doorbell and you'll yeah. remember them? Yeah. If you guys want to actually if you, see you Guys, if you shop. see me there, yeah. just... Stop on by. I'll give you know. a tour. Yeah. So do you own or work at the music shop in Beach? No, I own uh, Lord of the Strings. It's um, on a side street. It's by Rite Aid. But I work with them. They're my friends. Yeah. Are you hiring? Uh, <laughs> no, but you know, someday I might need an apprentice. Oh, guys, keep oh. that in mind. Now, that leads me to the next thing real quick. I do have... Uh, a ukulele making class. It's not really, it's mostly assembling parts that are already semi-made, but it would be like the beginning, beginning that I wish I had in the beginning. So there's some flyers if anyone's interested in making ukulele and taking it home. You get your flyer here. When is the class? This one is going to be, it's, Feb it's in, uh, I'm sorry, January, it's the second week of January on a Saturday. So, uh, how long is it? <clears throat> it's a two-hour class. So you could you bring your you know your your parents if you want if they want well you probably don't want to hang out with your parents, but uh, for anyone who wants to make a ukulele you can come and make a ukulele with me and I'll walk you guys through the steps. That sounds so. What if you want to learn how to make a violin? Is that more of a lengthy process? Everything is you know it's just as difficult to make a guitar a nice guitar as a nice violin. It takes a few years to get okay, but you practice every day like playing guitar. You're not going to be. Who's going to become a virtuoso overnight? You have to practice, you have to study. Uh, it takes time. So. What kind of ukulele? Uh, a tenor, small one. So that's bigger that's than the one that's first um, in the box. Yeah, that's a soprano. Sorry, the smallest one is soprano, right? Yeah, soprano. Soprano, that's the one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was, I was so you're making a soprano? Soprano, yes, the smallest one. Oh, so compared to a factory, yeah. it's like night and day. Because with me, like, uh, so the factory will thickness the wood the same measurement, but each piece of wood is different. It's, not, it's like a fingerprint. Each piece of wood has different grain. But me, I look at the wood and I say, okay, the grain is tighter, so I'll thickness it more here. And you have to think about the whole thing. Uh, so, you know, a handmade guitar is going to be more expensive, but it's going to have an incredible sound compared to a factory guitar. So if anyone doesn't believe me, if you play guitar, come my shop and play one of my guitars, you hear the difference between a factory and a handmade guitar. You know what the guitars here sound like? <laughs> this is fine, it works. And, and by the way, factories can turn out great sound. Like I've, maybe out of a thousand guitars that they'll pump out, there'll be like five that are incredible. Like the sound just comes right out. You know, it's a big sound, generous sound. So each guitar is different like a person. Even me, if I make 10 guitars, same measurements using the same woods as close as I can, each one sounds different. Like if someone has 10 kids, would they all look alike and sound alike? No, your brothers, sisters 
are variations of you, but they are a little different. Different voice, different appearance, height, everything. So I like that with guitars. Have you ever played like a Fender Redondo? Like, do you know that series of guitars? Is that an uh, acoustic guitar? They're acoustic guitars. Uh, I've probably repaired them. Say, like, they're really good quality guitars. Okay. Yeah, there's some factors that do turn out really good quality, by the way. Guys, what did we say? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And props, props to the guys that, that bent the wood, that had the, the, the courage to come up and try.